Hello everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com here and in this video we're going to look at the R squared for logistic regression. To do that I'm going to use this example from the Titanic data where the dependent variable is survived, yes or no, for each passenger. And we're going to regress that on age of the passenger. So to get the logistic output, we go analyze regression, binary logistic, and then we'll move survived into the dependent variable box and we move the age into the covariance box, which covariance is another name for IV. And then we press OK. Right. And we're going to look for the model summary box. This is what we're going to be focusing on. Model summary. Let's look at it. It's got in there two times the log likelihood. It's got something called the Cochrane Snell R squared. It's got a, something which I can't really say what that is. R squared. All right. So, but where's the regular R squared? You know, we've got these R squares named by the guys, but uh, where are the? Where's the original? The kind of standard R square. Well, the standard R square is not reported for the following reason. Let's look at the scatter plot of the DV, which has survived against age, which is the IV. Okay, here we have it. So on the uh, vertical axis, we've got the DV, which has survived, and we've got age along the x axis. We call that. R square takes a value between 0 and 1 in standard regression and basically the closer it is to 1 that means the better the fit in the extreme case that R square is equal to 1 it means my line in standard in simple linear regression my line my fitted line goes through all the points all the dots okay so can you think of how I could get one line to fit through all these dots. These are the dots of the data which we can see is not of the standard kind of pattern we've seen before where the dots could go like that and we could draw a vertical we could draw a line up there or the dots tend to go downwards like that and we could draw a line through there. No here we've got two horizontal lines, one at zero for D V and one at one, value one. Okay? Because basically zero did not survive, one did survive. So that, that's why there's nothing in between. But can we get a straight line that goes through every single one line that gets through every single point? No, because look, no matter how you think, let's think about if I drew a line like this, this line would not definitely not go through all the points. You could see if I just m pretended I drew a line like that. How about if I drew a line like this? Well, if I drew a line like this, it'd go through all the points that to survival equals zero, but it would go through none of those points up there. So R square cannot possibly be one. And for that reason, the regular R square is not is pretty useless because you know it can't get anywhere near one. Um, so you can't you don't actually know whether the fit is good or not. So that's why we've got these kind of two other R squares. Now the Cauchy Snell R square is does not f go between go up to one. So for that, for, it's not on the scale from zero to one. It could end up less than one. So um, it's not for that reason. It's not commonly used. This Nagal Kirky R square is designed to go up to one, and it tends to be the one that is more reported. All right. Now depending on your field application some people will some people will report this Nagel key some people report this Cox and Snell some people won't report either they report the t minus 2 times log likelihood the minus 2 times log likelihood is like the residual sum of squares uh, by itself it's not useful but it is useful to go and compute the chi square test for the model 
So we're going to look here at the omnibus test for the model coefficients. This figure, 1.371, is the chi-square test value. How do we get it? In part, is obtained by using this figure, the minus 2 log likelihood for the model, okay, and another figure. But we'll ignore that. We'll just, just look at this. Since it's a chi-square test, we want to know what the null is. The null hypothesis is that our model, compared to a model with no predictors, is adequate. So another way of saying it, the null hypothesis is that this model relative to a model with no predictors um, is good. Now, we all these figures are the same. So we just slide along to the p-value in this mod, for this case. P-value is 0.242, bigger than 0.05, so we do not reject. In other words, compared to a model with no predictors, this model does not do does not do any better. In other words, compared to a model with no predictors, this model this model is pretty is not that great. It means that we can definitely we can improve on this. And we can improve on this by including more IVs in the model. All right, but that is not what this has uh, video has been about. It's been about looking at the model summary. So I've told you why the regular R square cannot be used. Um, of the two R squares here, this Nagel Kirky one tends to be more one that's more reported. Okay. Um, some people also like to report the minus two log likelihood. That minus two log likelihood is used to compute the chi square test statistic which tests the null that our model relative to a model with no predictors is good. Okay, so that's just two things there to note today. Right, so I hope that's been helpful.